into our hearts. And your word will be resident in us in Jesus' name. The Lord, you will teach every one of us. You will help us to receive your word. And your word will be planted in us and will grow within us in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Then we're looking at our first Bible study this morning. Um, so I have to know if it's there. Um, uh, it's Bible study one, and if you come to page six um, of your um, uh, retreat outline, you should uh, see, see the Bible study there. Yeah, so um, I wanted to see. 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 I wanted I think she's so she's so she's so she's so she's so from the she's so 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 if, uh, Second. Then Mike, so we get somebody to read for us. So we'll just be talking. Bible study, it's not a message. So um, somebody with a loud voice can stand and, and read for us. So we're going to read this chapter now. Ben, as we've seen, as you look from that verse 15 to 28, there are a couple of things I quickly wanted to point to us before we do, uh, dive deeply into the study. Uh, first of all, as you read through it, it talks about the sacrifice and death of Christ. But at the core of our study today, it talks about the atonement by the blood of Jesus. But also, it's a reminder to you and I that um, Jesus was made a substitute for you and I. And then it drives home the point around the reason for Christ's death on the cross. Because, you know, it was a perfect sacrifice for the, for the penalty that you and I are faced with. But also we see the numerous benefits that come from the, from the, from the death of Christ on the cross for you and I. And the, require, the, the requirements that you and I need to meet for the remission of sin. But also it also points out to us, you know, the steps that... And you know, for those that haven't given their life to Christ, yeah. the steps you have to take to be saved. Our study today is a, is a, is a critical, a core study 
Yeah. And, and, I, and I want to just pull us back to um, a short story uh, before before we, we, we go into our various points. You know, it, it was Spurgeon, he, he mentioned, he, he gave a, a picture of uh, three uh, people. He talked about one, one was a soldier that went to war, and uh, the war was brutal, and um, he was uh, severely injured. And, and when the, um, the medic who was to come and treat the, 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 the soldier got there, uh, the, the, instead of looking at the, the injury of the soldier, he looked at, he was asking him about the war with the war, and he was asking about his weapons of war. You are agree with me that for the saving of the life of that soldier, that was the, the important yes. question for him to ask. And this one also gave another example. He gave an example about uh, a, 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 the captain of a ship. The captain was, uh, the, the ship was going in, in, on, on, the, on the high sea and there was terrible storms. But the, uh, the, the, the captain, instead of him being at the helm of, of the, the wheel of the ship to get the ship through the storm, he went to the back room to try and analyze and look for a way to escape through that, that terrible storm. But you also agree with me, that wasn't the important thing to do uh, at that time. It was important for him to be at the wheel, to, to, to navigate himself through, uh, through that terrible storm. And then, it, uh, as Spurgeon talked about, uh, um, a, a third person as well. You know, this, this, third, this third person was sick and was grievously sick almost to the point of death. But instead of him you know, looking for the medicine to, to, or to see the, the, the medical, to see the doctor, to take the medicine to save him from uh, the, the death that was pending or knocking on his door, he was trying to look for the source of the, of the, of the ailment, to research the source. Now, Spurgeon was trying to point to uh, something that we're looking at today. He said, we, we need to look away from the problems and look to the solution. And I pray that as you, uh, as we look through this study today, this study, you might already know what the, what the blood offers. You, you, you possibly could even go through the verses about the blood of Jesus. But it's so important for you and I, as we look at this study, that we focus on the atoning blood of Jesus. That is the solution. It's the solution in the, for our spiritual lives. It's the solution for the challenges and the difficulties we have. Perhaps you're here and you're facing one storm or the other in your life. The blood of Jesus is the solution. And you will find solution in this retreat in Jesus' name. Amen. You will find solution in this retreat in Jesus' name. Amen. God's covenant demanded that someone would die in our place. Christ gave his life so that we could receive the promise of eternal inheritance. He said, from the time of the fall, it had been repeatedly demonstrated that an innocent one must bear our guilt and punishment before we could be pardoned and set free. So what we're talking about today is we're talking about the atoning blood of Christ that brings redemption. The atoning blood of Christ that brings you and I into fellowship with the Lord. The atoning blood of Christ that can bring healing into our life. Because the Bible told us by his stripes we are healed. The atoning blood of Christ that can protect us. You know, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The atoning blood of, of Christ that gives you and I the authority, the right to be the children of God. We're going to look at our, our, our Bible story on our three headings this, uh, this afternoon. First of all, we're going to look at the redemption through his blood. And uh, I'm just going through what you see in the booklet. And, and number two, we'll look at remission through his blood. And number three, we'll look at righteousness through his blood. I want us to turn our Bibles uh, to First Timothy chapter 2. We're going to look at a couple of verses as we drive from this point. Like I said, we, as we look through the study, we turn our focus away from the problems, from the storms, from the challenges, and turn it on to Jesus. In First Timothy chapter 2, And then we're looking at verse 5 and in verse 6. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now we'll turn to uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, 
And uh, in verse 24 and 26, he says, actually, I'll just read from 23 to 26. He says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. And so you see, you see, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he, that, that he might be just and be justified of him which believes. But then, you know, we, when we are in sin without the application of the blood, we are, as it were, in captivity. We are locked up. You know, someone put it this way. Uh, we, we, are, we were in captivity. We were slaves. We were servants. Slowed, uh, sold in bondage to corruption. But the redemption is an act. It was an act by the Lord on our behalf. It was, uh, we were bought and purchased. If I, somebody put it this way, that when you think about redemption, you think about uh, a marketplace. You know, we were bought out of a marketplace. Not only that, we were bought and we were set free completely by his blood. And, and not only that, you know, we are, were debtors. You know, we, we were faced with the penalty that was sin. The Bible said that the wages of sin is death. But through this blood, we received, as it were, a credit. You know, it was an act. We were bought. It was a credit on our behalf because we were debtors. And it's a deliverance for us. You know, it, it, it's, it's to set us free completely. You know, if, if you think about what Christ had done, the payment that he had, he had placed for us, it is overwhelming. And it goes back to that story that I mentioned before. That as we think about it, it's such a simple concept for us. It's something that you and I, you know, with the years that we've worked with we've Christians and we've heard about, that we know about, we know the story. But it's, it's such a simple thing that it's, our story today is telling us that we turn our focus from all the things, all the noise, all the challenges, and we focus on the blood. Because by it, we are redeemed. By it, we are bought. By it, we are no more creditors. We are no more debtors, but we receive a credit. We receive freedom. By it, we are delivered. And I know the Lord will do great things in your life in Jesus' name. It's said, by God's standard of righteousness and justice, the soul that sinned must die. But the only way a person could come to God was to have the penalty for sins paid for. You know, we were bought, like I said, we were bought out of the marketplace. We were meant for, for, for slaughter, for destruction, but he bought us out. We were free from bondage. Another person put it this way. He said, when we think about redemption, we were bought for the purpose of being free. We were bought for the purpose of being free. That means, you know, when Christ brought us in the kingdom, he didn't bring us in that we will have one thing to pay for. Or he brought, uh, or brought us out so that we have one thing tied to us. But we were bought to be free. And I pray that we all in our lives will be free in Jesus' name. I want us to turn to First, uh, first Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 18. And verse 19. I'll read. He said, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by transition from your fathers. In verse 19, he said, But with the precious blood of Christ, and as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You know, he was a perfect sacrifice. He was a perfect sacrifice for you and I. A perfect sacrifice. You know, uh, somebody put it this way, and I want to read to us. He said, to receive to the, 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 the redemption of Christ. He said, to redeem persons from tr transgressions uh, committed against the Lord the, 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 uh, in the first testament. This transgression
this, uh, this, this debt and price was paid liberally. You know, Christ does not demand anything from you or not. It's a free gift that he has given to us that we will be set free. And I pray that you and I will be free in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want to also read from our, book, our booklet, the, the last sentence in that first half. He said, in so doing, he became the only mediator, the only bridge between God and man. He said, now God is satisfied and man is pardoned when he puts his faith in the shared Lord of Christ. You know, uh, many, you know and, and this one is so important. You know, many a times um, we are, sometimes we think that it's enough to be good. It's enough um, to buy time or to just walk through life being moral in our lives. But then as we look through those scriptures, it tells us something really important for you and I that we shouldn't forget. That without the blood of Jesus, without the cleansing that comes from the blood of Jesus, we cannot be children of God. We cannot walk the path that God has called us to. You know, the, like I said, the, the price of sin, the weight of sin was dead. But by that perfect sacrifice that Christ paid on the cross of Calvary, it set us free. You know, I'm not going to put it this way. He said the creator, you know, died for the creator. It was only the blood of Jesus that was satisfied at the, 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 uh, the, 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 the penalty for our sin. And this price that he paid, not only that does it is it complete and satisfied, but also it doesn't it's it's a price that he paid once and for all for you and I. You know, if you think your mind, take your mind back, think of it as if you were in the old testament, whereby you know every year you have to take an animal and sacrifice and shed blood that way for, for, for your sins. But Christ paid once and for all for you and I. And that's why, you know, we should, with all gratitude, come before the Lord this morning and be grateful to the Lord. But more than, more than that, it is so, so important that we sacrifice and give our lives to Christ. You know, I want you to, you to take your mind back to the story of Abraham and Isaac. You remember the story? That as Abraham and Isaac, they joined, and they were getting towards the place of the sacrifice. And uh, Isaac asked Abraham a question. He said, here's the rules. You know, here's the wood for the sacrifice. And he said, where is the lamb? And remember what Abraham told him. He said, the Lord shall provide for himself a lamb for the sacrifice. You know, Jesus was a lamb for you and I. You know, you and I would not have been able to pay the price. Another man will not put it this way. He said, if we fret and fear to face earthly judges, how would we have fared if we had to face the judge, the greatest of all judges? the judge of the whole world. But because of this land, because of Jesus, because of his blood, you and I have escaped. And I pray we will remain escaped in Jesus' name. Amen. But now we're going to look at our, our second point, the remission through his blood. The remission through his blood. You know, when we talk about remission, we're talking about the cancellation of the penalty that was upon our, upon our lives. It was a cancellation. You know, it wasn't uh, just a mere write-off. You know, sometimes you, can, you, you, you write on some paper and uh, you can see still the, the, the marks of the writing on the paper. But this was a, a completely whitewash, uh, not, not covering of our sin, but a cancellation of our sin. Another person put it this way, it was a complete disappearance of our sin. That the mark that stood against us before, the things that the enemy could have pointed to in our lives, in, in, in our life that we have done, you know, through the remission, through the blood of Christ, there's a complete di disappearance of it. A complete disappearance, not like, you know, sometimes the doctors say there's a remission. You know, maybe there's a remission of one ailment and maybe it will come back. No, this was a complete disappearance of the symptoms, the signs and the symptoms a forgiveness that only we could get through Christ. You know, it drives on the point to you and I that there's no substitute. That if we've not completely given our lives to the Lord, it is important that we give our lives completely to the Lord. You know, Spurgeon put, put it this way, that it's an unalterable truth. 
You know, it's the truth that cannot be altered or changed. That it's only through the blood that we receive remission. He said, by no means can sin be patterned without the atonement. There's no hope without the blood that Jesus has shed on the cross of Calvary. Like I mentioned, you know, people today think that sin can be forgotten by time. You know, if I live long enough, the sins I've committed in the past can be forgotten. Some people think that, oh well, if I live a decent life, I'm, I, I'm a moralist, I'm a philanthropic, then my sins can be forgiven. Even some people, you know, fearfully to say, some people say if I die, if I kill myself, my sins will be forgotten. But, you know, there is, without this sacrifice, without this blood, you know, sin cannot be washed away. The remission through his blood. I pray God will help us to remember this, not to repeat sin. You know, the Bible tells us that shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But that you and I remember that it is by his blood we are pushed and we are cleansed. And he will do so in our lives in Jesus' name. Let's look at Exodus 24, verse 6 to 8. The book of Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. In verse 6 to verse 8. He said, And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience uh, of the people and they said all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient in verse 8 he said that Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all his words I, I want us to turn to the book of 1 John 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 First John chapter one, verse seven. In first John chapter one, verse seven, and I read, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And I want to read verse 8. He said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to for forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the remission through his blood you know, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It redeems us. It brings, it, it, it creates a bridge between us. You know, there was a gulf between us and, and the law, but with, with the, with the, by the blood, there's a bridge created. He said, I, I, I'll read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. I'm, I'm looking at our booklet. If you go with me to the paragraph just on the, on the meet, uh, the point two. He said, and without shedding of blood is no remission. He said, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is said for many for the remission of sins. You know, for the remission of sin. Now, our, 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 that chapter 9 points to three things, and I, I, we're going to talk about them as we look at this, uh, this, this point. Is that a testament demands death? And I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more. And then it said, forgiveness demands blood. And judgment demands a substitute. Now, in all those three things, that our study points us to, those three things, all those three key points were satisfied by Jesus on our behalf. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? That he, a testament demands that, that means, you know, a testament uh, or a covenant, as you might use the word covenant for it, you know, doesn't come into effect until the person died. And Jesus died for us. You know, the Bible tells us something. He said, pre adventure for a good man, you know, somebody might die. But think about us. You know, we were, we, before we came to Christ, we were in sin. We might have been good people, but we were in sin. But yet, before we actually knew anything, Jesus gave himself for us. He died for us. And by his death, 
His testament, his, the, the, the covenant comes to effect for our lives. He said, and forgiveness demands blood. Jesus gave his blood on our behalf. And he was our perfect substitute. You know, without, with him, we do not need anything else. I want, to, I, want, I want to continue reading there from our booklet. He said, a will, that is a testament, does not take effect unto one who made it die. He said, the benefit and provisions of the will only come, only come to the beneficiaries after the death of the testator. He said, remissions of sin and the provisions of the new covenant are ours through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. He said he had rectified the new covenant through his own blood, just as the old covenant was rectified by Moses with the blood of the Lamb. You know, he gave his blood for you and I. You know, he was, you know, as it were, made of sacrifice for us. He was, his, he was the perfect sacrifice for us. You know, by this sacrifice, you know, when we come to the Lord, our sin is removed. You know, it, it, it washes our sins away. He removes the mark of sin from our lives. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. I want us to just, we're going to go to the book of Revelation. I want to read those two passages there. Revelation chapter 1, in verse 5 and verse 6. Revelation chapter 1. In verse 5 and verse 6. It said, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he and have made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation, Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, in verse 9 and in verse 10. In verse 9, I read. He said, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kingdom and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. I think God will bless those words into our hearts in Jesus' name. But then by the blood we are redeemed. By the blood we are justified. By the blood you know, we are made right. By the blood, we are sanctified. By the blood, we are cleansed. By the blood, our conscience is purged. You know, God has done such a great work for us. And like I said from the beginning, that we do not focus on the problems, but we focus on Jesus. We put our eyes and we set our mind on Jesus. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to our third point righteousness through his blood. You know, having seen this great price that Christ has paid for us, that Christ has given to you and I, it is so important that we live a righteous life. It's so important that we live lives that, you know, at, at the Bible, I, I think about it sometimes. The Bible says something. The Bible says that, he said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great, such great a salvation? You know, think about the greatness of the price that Christ had paid for us. You know, his, his sacrifice was once and for all. His sacrifice was a complete sacrifice. It was a sacrifice was one that you and I did not merit. There's no, there's nothing you and I could have offered for it. But he freely gave, gave it to us. And if he has freely given this to us, it's so important that we live a righteous life. But we can live this righteous life through his blood as well. Let's go to that. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 9, our text. And we're going to look at uh, verse 24 to 28. We're going to read, we're reading this verse because they're so important to remind us. You know, it's so, it's so easy these days for us, like I told us in that story, for us to look at the storms, for us to look at the ailments, for us to look at the challenges, and not focus our eyes on Jesus. 
in, in Hebrews chapter 9, in verse 24, it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in, in the presence of God for us. You know, Jesus is in the presence of God for us. He said, nor yet that he should offer himself often. It, it, it's not a continuous sacrifice. He had paid the price once and for all for all. As the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood for, of others. In verse 26, he said, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by sacrifice of himself. And as it's appointed unto men, once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. But then, as, I, as, as you look at our, 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 our study our, into our, in the booklet, he said we were meant to face judgment for the sins that we have committed. But because of the price that Christ has paid for us, we are able to escape that judgment. You know, that true faith in Christ, our sins are forgiven and will never be remembered. Our hearts are clear and we are made righteous. You know, you and I can walk and follow after Christ it, with true the blood of Jesus. Let's look at um, um, that's in Hebrews chapter 7. That's in Hebrews chapter 7 in verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 uh, and to, I'll read from 25 to and actually 25 and 27. In 25 he said, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Verse 27, Who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the, for the people's. But for, he, for this he did once, when he offered up himself. You know, Jesus is, was not like the, 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 the high priest of old. The high priest in the Old Testament, they needed to offer sacrifice for, them, for themselves and then offer sacrifice for the people. But, you know, Jesus doesn't need to do that. He, offered, he paid the price for you for, and for I once and for all. And because of that, it's so important that in our daily life that we put away sin, that we walk righteously in, in righteousness after the Lord. I, I want to read to us in, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And verse, verse 13 and verse 14. Actually, I'll read from verse 12 so that you get uh, the full picture of what I'm trying to say there in verse 12. It said, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered into the holy place, 